Hello, today we're going to talk about mites inside of your vermicompost. Let me start by saying this, do not fight the mites. Mites are an integral part of your ecosystem inside of your vermicompost. They will come and go as different conditions inside of your system fluctuate. Mites are in your vermicompost system because they want to eat the food scraps. They are detrivores, meaning they eat material that is already dead or decaying. They are not there to hurt your worms or to kill your worms. What they are looking for is to eat the food scraps. Now, very similar to worms, they need a level of humidity in order to exchange oxygen with their environment. So if the system dries up, they are not going to be able to survive. For that reason, if you're having a my population explosion and you want to get it under control right away, the best thing that you can do is uncover your bin and let the surface area dry up for a couple of hours and that almost immediately will get rid of most of the mites. The other thing that some people do is they add diatomaceous earth. I haven't tried this. It's really not something I like to do simply because once it gets humid and wet, diatomaceous earth no longer works. And if you're going to use uh, DE, make sure you're using the food grade. Because if you use the stuff that you usually add to the swimming pools, you're going to kill your whole system. Another great practice to have is to bury your food scraps when you're adding them to your system. And by that, I mean making sure you're adding a nice thick layer of vermicompost on top of the new fresh wood scraps that you're adding to the system because the mites are not going to go down to get them and that way you're also preventing flies and other critters to be feel attracted to the smell of fresh decomposing food scraps think about it in this way you have a bin that can host up to 5,000 worms and suddenly the worm population inside of your bin goes up to 20,000. The one organism that will be a hazard to your worms inside of that system at that point will be other worms. Therefore, when you're thinking about my population, what you want to think about is making sure that no organism inside of your vermicompost system is able to outcompete the rest of the organisms in there. Because what you're looking for is a striking a balance inside of your systems. And mites are a natural part of your system. They will come and go as humidity and acidity levels fluctuate. That said, if you're having a mite issue where you see that there is way too many mites that you really think they are an issue or you're just really annoyed by them and you want to make sure that the mite population is under control, there is two variables that you really want to pay attention to. Number one is humidity and number two is acidity. Red mites inside of your vermicompost compost system will naturally thrive in conditions with high humidity and high acidity. Therefore, these are the two variables that you can really tweak and work in order to troubleshoot my population explosions. That said, it's really important for you to keep in mind that worms need an optimal level of 80% humidity in order for them to exchange oxygen with their environment, meaning in order for them to breathe. However, if excess fluids, excess humidity starts to accumulate in surfaces inside of your vermicompost system, that usually creates the optimal conditions for my population explosion. Think, for example, if you throw watermelon peels inside of your vermicompost system, that's a surface where a lot of excess fluid is going to concentrate and you're going to have small pockets of water. That is the environment where mites really thrive. So one thing that you can do in order to prevent my population explosion is to make sure that there is humidity inside of the bin, enough for worms to breathe, but also that there is no accumulation of excess fluids in any surface, especially on the top surface. Mites don't borrow. They are not going to go deep inside your vermicompost. They usually stay on the surface. Your vermicompost will always have a level of humidity and a level of acidity. So there are things that you can do to make sure that both of these variables are within the right range in order for the mite not to have an advantage over other organisms inside of your vermicompost. Let's talk about acidity. Acidity is a pH inside of your vermicompost system and acidity will naturally go higher and your system will naturally tend to be more acidic when you add fresh food scraps. So worms can tolerate in between usually 
nothing lower than five and nothing higher than nine. There's different things that you can do to influence acidity inside of your vermicompost system. One of the things that I do because I use Bokashi, which is naturally a very acidic material, I add a lot of eggshells and biochar to my system in order to make sure that the acidity level remains pretty much within range. The other thing that I do to help me with acidity is the carbon to nitrogen ratio. If you have way too much food scrap material, too much nitrogen in the system, your system will naturally stay more acidic. And if the food scraps or the nitrogen or the green material is way too much compared to the carbon or brown material, then the system will be very acidic. And in those conditions, your worms are almost drowning in food scraps. Carbon to nitrogen ratio and airflow are the two factors that you really need to get right in order for your system to stay healthy and resilient. My question for you, what are you doing at home to enrich the quality of the life of your worms beyond food scraps and bedding? Please share that with us in the comments so that we may also be inspired by what you're doing. One of the most common mistakes that I used to make when I first started vermicomposting was to overload my bins with food scraps. That means I was breaking the rule of nitrogen to carbon ratio, which should be 50 parts carbon per one part nitrogen or 50 parts brown material or bedding per one part of food scraps. That seems a little bit extreme, but that is actually the ideal ratio inside of your vermicomposting system. And there are ways that you can push that ratio, but when I overloaded my bins with a lot of food scraps, I would create the ideal conditions for mite population explosion, and I would see a lot of mites. Once I really started to pay attention to the carbon to nitrogen ratio, a lot of my mite issues really went away. The other element that you can control to help you with humidity as well as acidity is airflow. Air circulation inside of your vermicompost system is one of the most important factors within your system and we often don't think about it. Inside of your vermicompost system, airflow is going to help you with humidity because the more surfaces that come in contact with air inside of your vermicompost system, the easier it is going to be for excess humidity to travel out through Evaporation. Airflow will also prevent the formation of anaerobic bacteria inside of your system, which will cause odors Ew. and bad smells to come out of your system. So airflow really is one of the healthiest things that you can do for your system. There's a couple of things that I do to make sure that there is good airflow inside of my system. One of them is I create air pockets. How I do it is I carve out a corner of the bin and then I start placing layers of cardboard. But instead of placing the layers horizontally where they're more likely to compact, I start placing the cardboard vertically. And what that does, it creates a very nice air bubble from the top of the bin all the way to the bottom. So now all the areas that are exposed to that air circulation are gonna contribute to evaporation of excess humidity and it's also breaking the surface so the surface of the bin right now as you can see one area has a lot of composting material and the other area is essentially air hollows and that it's really preventing the compaction and the accumulation of excess humidity on the surface of the composting bin which will be the ideal environment for mite population explosion. So I am breaking the compaction on the surface and then I'm creating a really nice pocket of air circulation inside of the system. The type of material that you use for bedding inside of your composting system will also play a pivotal role in air circulation. One of the reasons why I love leaves as a main source of bedding for my vermicompost system is because they really create the conditions for a lot of air circulation. Especially if you're mixing leaves with food scraps in like different layers like lasagna, they tend to create a lot of air pockets naturally and that creates really good conditions for warm health, for microorganisms to thrive and reproduce inside of your system. Like you can see how I feed my worms in some of my other videos. I really packed a lot of food and I really press them hard sometimes. But airflow, 
will naturally stay in the system because of the leaves. Another benefit of leaves is that when they break down and decompose, they break down into trace minerals or trace elements that are essential for plant development and plant health. So leaves are a way to remineralize, to bring a lot of different minerals inside of your vermicompost system in a format that has already been taken in by a plant. Another thing that I love to do is to have a catching system as part of my vermicompost system. So I have my tub bin where I add all the food scraps, where the worms are living, thriving, decomposing all of that material. But then in addition to the tub bin, I have a lower bin which is filled up up to three quarters with wood chips. Wood chips are big particles that allow air circulation and they absorb a lot of excess humidity. Please do me a favor. Please click like and subscribe and share this video with someone you may think will benefit from hearing this information. Because what I'm trying to do here is to share information with you, to inspire you to try new things in your warm system.